Hi, welcome to yoga. My name is Lindsay McDougall. I'm so pleased to be your yoga teacher for this class. We are going to be working on some yogi toe holds and balance and standing postures. And for today, uh, have a block, have a strap, and we're going to start on our backs in Shavasana position. So make sure you have extra room so you can move around. You don't want to have any couches or things inhibiting you in our practice. So as you lay back, just let the arms fall open, palms face up, tuck the shoulder blades underneath the back, and let there be a natural curve to the back, the legs splaying out to the side, and begin to take deep breaths. Beginning to change the body through the breath. Starting to bring our conscious awareness into the body. Feeling the floor support us. Through the breath, evening out any areas or limbs or parts of the body that feel dull or tired. And as you exhale, contract the abdomen and pull the abdominal center in and back towards the low back. Engaging Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. And on your inhale, Lifting the whole body through and up the chest into the back of the neck, the back of the head. And make it the breath that is meant for you. An exploratory ebb and flow, yin and yang, cycling breath. For a few more moments here, get to know the breath inside of you. Let it be natural. Noticing sensations. Exhale, gently open the eyes, bend the right knee, and bring that knee into the chest, pulling it towards the right armpit, and giving it a squeeze, externally rotating the hip. And then gently bring with your left hand the knee across your back, right arm extends, and just come into a super gentle twist, letting the knee just fall over to the left side, saying hello to the back. And exhale, coming back, give that right knee a squeeze, and exhale lower. Lift the left leg, bend at the knee, pull that left knee into the left armpit. Squeezing it up and in. Right leg is long. And then exhale, rocking the body over to the right into a super reclined, gentle twist. Left arm comes open. And then inhaling, coming back. Squeeze that left knee in. And exhale, lower the leg. And then find your block. 
and bring that block outside of your mat about arm's length from the middle of your mat. And then grab a strap or a towel, something that um, strap is preferable, something that you can grab your leg with. And I'll demonstrate on the left side. So you can stay lying down and just bend the left knee and then take, grab your hands in the middle of the strap and then take the strap outside of your left heel. And then you're gonna grab both, both of the strap inside that left ankle. So if you can see, the strap is just kind of cupping around the heel of the foot, okay? Then inhale, lift and lengthen the left heel. Press the right leg down, activate yogi toes. Inner thighs roll down, ball of the foot is reaching forward, especially the big toe mound. Roll those shoulders under. And then exhale, slowly open your left leg over to the left until it touches your block on the calf. And as you do so, you're, you're externally rotating the heel towards the ceiling, the toes towards the ground, and then the shin is resting on top of the block here. Right leg is down, breath is soft and easy. And the right hip is coming down slightly into the mat. And the chest is opening. So this is such a nice hold with the strap because we really get to access the inner thigh and the heel. And exhale, reach, lift that leg back up. Give it a squeeze, lift the head, bring your knee to the nose. Then exhale, release the strap, drop the left leg. And then feel the difference in the sides of the body. Grab your block, bring it to the other side of your mat, on the right side. And then we'll do the same thing on the right. So taking the hands to the middle of the strap, bending the right knee, and then just loop that strap outside of the of the heel grabbing both ends of the strap inside of the heel so it's not touching the ankle it's really going outside of the heel and then you have your hand inside inside of the foot around the ankle uh, you know it's, uh, it's level with the ankle but you're grabbing both ends of the strap inhale lift the heel lengthen square hips Drop that left shoulder, right shoulder, left knee is, is engaged, left leg is engaged, balls of the feet are pressing outward, yogi toes. Reaching the right heel to the ceiling, getting nice and long. And then we'll gently Open up the right leg, taking it out to the side, keeping the left hip down, and then rotating, externally rotating the hip. So the inner leg, the heel is, is rotating up towards the ceiling, the toes are coming down. And then breathe into that abdominal space, reach through both of the heels. Left arm can be at, at your side, palm face up. Press through the heels, squeeze the quads, find that connection from your heel to your hips, and then adjust the core. Engage the core. And inhale. Pull the heel in, reach the leg long back to center. And exhale, drop the strap and drop that right leg. Good. 
Let's roll onto our right side, pressing up. You can put the strap and the block aside for now and come into tabletop here. Starting to warm up the back. Roll elbows back, chest forward, reach the heart forward, press into the shins. Exhale, pull the abdomen in, tuck the chin, look at the navel. And inhale, moving with the breath, letting the breath dictate the expansion and the contraction. Maybe moving hips side to side, rolling the neck, just getting warmed up here. Snap, crackle, and pop. Cylindrical movements. Until we feel our spine is nice and ready for more asana. Inhale, tuck the, heat, the toes, lift the hips, press the hips back, inner thighs back, rotate biceps towards the ceiling. The neck and chin are soft and hanging as the outer shoulders wrap around towards the front ribs. Down the facing dog. Inhale, come forward to your plank. Pull the abdomen in, elbows back, reach the heart forward. Have a smile on your face. Tuck the tailbone towards the heels. And then lift the right leg back behind you, out to the side, and back in and down. And we'll do this to the left. Strong legs, elbows back, chest forward, lift the left heel out to the side, comes back to center, and down. Drop the knees into bear pose, keeping the toes tucked under. Pull in on the abdomen, low ribs in, tuck the low back, reach through the chest. Exhale, plank. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lower to knees, chest, chin, or straight down to our low cobra here, bringing hands outside of ribs near the waist, pull the elbows in, lift the chest, reach the heart forward, engage the knees, lift the kneecaps. Good, and exhale, tuck the toes, knees, chest, chin, reverse back into your child's pose. And lingering here, creating an active child's pose, hands together, keeping the elbows lifted, pressing the arms straight, and just hammocking the heart a bit in between the hips and the hands, getting that nice long extension. And then inhale, come to tabletop, and we're back to down dog. Inhale, reach the right leg back. Sweep it forward to the right wrist. Low lunge, look up. Pull the abdomen in and back. Tailbone is reaching towards the left heel. Left inner thigh is lifted and rotated in. Can you get longer in the chest, shoulders down the back? Engage the core, bring the left foot to meet the right. Inhale, halfway. Shoulders down the back. Exhale, forward fold. Tuck the chin, squeeze, thighs, kneecaps lift. And inhale, let's come all the way up. Good. Adjust my 
Find your mountain pose here. Sinking into those heels, lifting the heart, getting even throughout the planter surface of the feet. Streaming energy down the legs, lifting the heart, and then press those arms down, almost like the heart clavicle area, the chest and sternum are reaching higher than the shoulders ever could. Good, inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, place the hands, right foot back, low lunge, look forward. Again, lifting through the hips, engaging the core, spreading the chest. Right inner thigh rolls back. Strong back leg here. Get that front right hip stretch in this position. And then exhale, make your way to plank pose. Holding into your plank, come down to low plank on your forearms and squeeze the hips down and forward so that the chest can lengthen and you're getting into that core area. And then drop the heels over to the right and drop the heels over to the left. So just a little bit of oblique, warm, warming up the obliques in these little twists. So you're gonna be leaning into that right elbow, coming back to center, heels to the left, left forearm, squeezing, looking forward. Let's do one more on each side. Good, and then drop the whole body coming into Sphinx Pose, elbows under, shoulders, lifting the chest, rolling the shoulder heads back, and then isometrically pulling the floor towards the body as the chest moves up and out. So hips are touching, but the abdomen is reaching up and forward. How is the breath? Take a nice inhale here. And exhale, make your way to downward facing dog. Inhale, lengthen your dog. Exhale, press back. Hands should be, the weight should be even on the hands, but the feet and the heels are taking most of the weight, the body's weight here. So see if you can move your body weight even further into the right, into the heels here. Notice what that does to the breath, to the arms, the back of the chest. Good, inhale. Lift the right leg back, sweep it forward to the right wrist. Let's come up into warrior one here. Sweep the arms up, grab opposite elbows, ground into that left heel, tuck the hips under as you sink into that right knee and lengthen through the sides of the body. Just imagine getting wide through the hips, wide through the shoulders. Exhale, warrior two. Arms wide, adjust your feet if necessary so that the front heel intersects the back arch. Reaching from that heart center, free up the shoulders. Getting weightless here. Lifting up through Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. 
Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, let's come into side angle here. Bringing the right elbow to knee, level one. Left arm comes by the ear. Level two, bring that hand inside of the right leg. Level three, bring that hand outside of the right leg. And then everyone is rotating the chest up towards the ceiling. Tuck the tailbone, strong back leg, inner rotation of the back knee. Good, and exhale, frame the right foot, drop that left knee, squaring the hips towards the front of the mat, and then lean back in your hips, shimmying the right heel forward, Ardha Hanumanasana, half, half splits here. Pull up on the kneecap, ball the foot moves away, lift the chest. Very intense on the calf and the hamstring. Exhale, rock onto the right sole of the foot. Left hand comes inside the right sole. Open up into a low lunge twist here. Right arm to the sky. Can you lengthen the left side body forward and back? Forward and towards the front of the mat, but then also you're rotating to look at that right thumb. Good, exhale, take a vinyasa here, hands inside the right foot, lower down. Find your way to downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, sweep it forward to the left wrist. Come into warrior one on the left. Grabbing opposite elbows, maybe in the funky way. Internal rotation of that back leg, the inseam of the leg is moving back. Right hips coming forward. And then we're just getting super wide in the hips, the waist, shoulders. Make sure with this opposite arm grab, you're letting those shoulders drop. Just really breathing into this nice warrior one. Exhale, open up the arms, warrior two. Tuck the tailbone, lift the inner thigh of the front leg. Open up the right hip to the back heel. Become weightless, letting the heart, the heart and the power of the heart create a lightness in the arms, all the way out to the fingertips. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, level one, bring that elbow to the knee, right arm by the ear. Level two is gonna drop that hand inside the foot or the ankle. Level three is gonna bring that hand flat outside of the foot. And everyone is internally rotating that back heel, grounding that outer heel. Tucking that left hip under, and that's going to be the rudder to really help to open in this pose. Good. Exhale. Drop the right arm. Frame the left foot. Drop the right knee. Lean back a bit to shimmy the left heel out to lengthen the left leg. Reach the heart forward. Breathe into the stretch here in the calf and the hamstring. Find your Hanuman here. The king monkey. And then rock to the sole of the foot on the left side. Right hand comes inside, left arm lifts. Low twist here. Again, getting long in the right side of the body. 
from the right knee and looking towards the left thumb. And then coming into knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, upward dog. Linger in your cobra or up dog, pulling the chest forward. Moving the navel towards the thumbs, squeezing the kneecaps up. And weight is even on both hands, lifting through the armpits. Get a nice upward dog here so we can say we did it. <laughs> Exhale, tuck the toes, come into down dog. Inhale, right leg back. Exhale, bring it forward to three quarters up your mat. Left foot comes behind it, getting into triangle. Straighten the legs, let's pinwheel the arms open to the left side. Pull up on the kneecaps, drop the tailbone. Hinge the hips to the left as you come over that right thigh. Again, keeping that, those kneecaps lifted, place the right hand down, roll the shoulders down the back, and get into those obliques there. As we, if it feels good, you can look up at your left thumb. But just like what we warmed up in our low plank, really use our abdominal core to rotate the chest towards the ceiling so you're gonna feel more of a contraction on that right side and more of a lengthening, but both sides are engaging. Lengthening on the left side, that is, but both sides are in the dynamic here. Hand on the hip, bend the right knee, come into half moon, right arm comes outside the right toes, lifting the inside, the inseam of the left leg. Can you rotate to open the arms here, maybe even getting light on the fingertips to just play with a little bit of balance here. Good, exhale, drop the left arm, standing split for a moment, squaring off the hips, and then inhale, bend that right knee ever so slightly, Lift the left leg back. We're going to come into warrior three here. You can use your arms back behind you like Superman. Or for more of a challenge, you can sweep them up by your head. And then look forward. Imagine you're in chaturanga right now. You're engaging the whole core. Lengthening through the whole spine. And then let's come to standing, sweeping that left foot through, grabbing the knee. Squeezing that left knee in, and then taking peace fingers to the big toe, lengthening through the left heel if that's in your practice. If not, you can stay with pulling the knee in. For those who can lengthen out the heel, lift the chest, everyone drop the tailbone. And let go, let's come to stand. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, chaturanga, or plank, knees, chest, chin. High cobra, or up dog. And on your exhale, coming into downward facing dog. Inner thighs rolling back, lengthening the heels, weight in the heels. Let's take this to the other side. Left leg lifts, sweep it forward, three quarters up your mat, right heel down, triangle, pivot the arms open. 
Coming to stand, squeeze, lift the, the kneecaps. Hinge to the right leg, the left side of the body. Left arm comes to shin. And then opening, pivoting the chest. So there's a little bit of dynamic here where the left hip is pressing in towards the right heel. And we're also staying grounded on that inner left ball of the toe mound. And again, find that squeeze in the left oblique to help you rotate, keeping that length. Tucking the tail, engaging that core. And then we'll take it into half moon. Right hand on hip, bend the left knee, and hop up if you need a block for your hand. Or you can just graze the fingertips, or maybe note there's no contact with the ground, and you're using the balanced posture. Lift the inner thigh of the right leg. Tuck the tailbone. Reach the heart. Exhale, drop the right hand. Bend the left knee slightly, dropping the right hip to square off the, the hips. And with the left knee a little bit bent, you can rise up to warrior three with Superman arms, going, flowing back. Reaching the chest forward, lengthening the spine. Or for more challenge, the arms are coming by the ears. Again, we're keeping that strength in the core, lifting the core to protect the low back. Low back is long. Reaching through the toes. Can you look forward between your hands or forward in space if your hands are behind you? Inhale. Come to stand, sweeping the right foot up with you to grab the knee. Give it a squeeze. And then left hand on hip. You can work your way to yogi toe hold, extending the right leg. Wherever you are, you're dropping the hips, raising the heart. Squeezing inner thighs back and down. And then exhale, drop the foot, come to mountain pose. Good. Hands to heart center. Let's come to chair pose. Sit back in your chair and your heels. Bring your left ankle on top of your right knee. And sit back even further. As you do so, the chest is lengthening. And then hands to heart center. Bring the elbows up and over the legs, coming into a forward fold. You can even reach your hands to the ground. Maybe the right leg lift, uh, lengthens rather, coming into a straight leg. And just drop the head here. You can keep a bend in the right knee if that helps to reach the floor. This is just a really nice stretch in the IT band. Good. Inhale, come up to chair. Come to stand, take the left knee with you. And then if you have the toe hold, grab that. If you don't, keep on the knee. And then we're going to have the right hand on the hip if you're doing the extension and open that knee or that heel out to the side, looking over the right shoulder. So just like we did at the beginning of class, externally rotating the left leg, finding that core, right hip back, and then okay I just kind of lost my balance we can all work it into purity with the breath coming back to center 
Release the toe hold, but raise the arms, holding the left leg high, and exhale down. Good. Shake it out. Rock. Make your, move your ankles around. We'll try this on the other side. Coming into chair, sitting back, reaching the arms forward. Exhale, hands to heart center. Bring that right ankle on top of the left knee. Sitting back in your chair, raising that chest forward, keeping the low back long. Exhale, fold over that right leg, keeping the left knee bent. Maybe eventually you can straighten it, but really I want you to go for the outer hip stretch, IT band stretch. Drop the head, drop the neck. Find your, your version. One side is always different. And then inhale, come up to chair. Sit back with the arms up. Exhale, stand, lengthen the left leg and then bringing that right knee in. Options here to keep hold of the right knee or keep the left um, hand on the hip. You can take the yogi toe hold. And then what's next? We're going to open it to the side. Externally rotating, dropping the outer right hip, looking over that left shoulder. Reaching through the heels. Grounding through the breath. Exhale, back to center. Keep the leg lifted, let go of the hold and reach both arms up, holding that knee or that leg straight. And exhale down. Good. Shake it out, find your mountain pose. Inhale, chair, sit back. Feels heavy, chest is liberated and free, thumbs are externally rotated. Feel that support from the back of the heart to lift the chest. Squeeze the quads, last breath. Can you sit a little lower? Three, two, one. Hands sit heart center, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, place the hands, hop or step back to plank, chaturanga. Take a vinyasa here. Good. From here, we're going to come forward into our plank. And then rock the heels over to the right, Vashisthasana here. Open up the left arm. Now if you can, bring your left heel onto your calf or onto your inner thigh. So we've already done a lot of balance, a lot of this side opening poses. So find Vashisthasana 2 variation. And then roll that right shoulder back, lift the hips. Round into the outer right heel. Like you're between two panes of glass. Good. Exhale. Come into plank. Drop the left leg. Take a vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Rock the heels over to the left, right arm comes up. And if you can, bring that top foot on the calf, although I find it easier on the inner thigh as a fallen tree. And then elbow, left elbow back, 
Lift the hips, press into that outer edge of the left foot, and almost become two-dimensional here. Remembering our first posture, remembering the hips are externally rotating down, and exhale, vinyasa. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Let's take a child's pose here. Drop the knees. Get long in the front of the body. And I want to take you through one more variation of Vashisthasana for level two, three. If you have both um, feet in plain Vashisthasana, you're going to go to Fallen Tree. And we'll work, work this into a posture. So sink the hips, keep the tail tucked under, just give those arms and legs uh, a break for a moment. Gather up your strength and courage. And then inhale, let's come to tabletop. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Rock the heels over to the right. Left arm lifts. Left leg comes inside at Fallen Tree. So for those who want to take this to the next level, press the hips up even higher. And then take yogi toe hold, tucking, tucking the left hip down and in and then extending the left heel straight in front of you, meaning it's going towards the long side of the mat, and then raising that left foot, but keeping the left hip tucked under, externally rotated. You want to keep the toe hold and move into the splits. Go ahead, or just come back to a vinyasa, downward facing dog. If you're in the splits, just take a nice forward fold. And bend that front leg and we'll come back, meeting back in downward facing dog. So find your down dog. And we'll be revisiting this in the next coming uh, classes. So you'll get a chance to really build up your strength and, and get to do something pretty cool. Good. Let's try this on the left side, coming forward to plank. You've got this. Rock the heels over to the left, open up the right hand. Find your fallen tree. Lift that hip high. Make it, just go to your edge, wherever you are. If you want to try this, this uh, yogi toe hold, you're going to lift those hips high, take the toe off the foot, and then just grab it with your fingers, and then shoot that heel forward, forward to the long edge of the mat. And then it's going to come up high, but we're not losing that contact from heel to hip. Right hip is coming down towards the heel. My left side's a little bit weaker than my right. And then if you want to take this to the splits, you're going to keep that leg straight and then just pivot on the back toe and bring the heel flat and then just kind of let gravity work you into the split. Otherwise, you can move your way to vinyasa, and we'll all meet back in child's pose here. So if you're in the splits, take that forward fold, and then untuck the back toes. Take your vinyasa, and 
We'll meet back in child's pose. How did it go? <laughs> if you felt like totally lost and just, I can't do this, it's okay. It's totally, totally okay. It takes a moment for our brain to connect different muscle groups together. And that's the joy of yoga, really. Good. Inhale, come to tabletop, tuck the ankles under, and let's come to a crane pose. So bend the left knee, bringing the heel outside the right hip, and then depending on your flexibility, I think probably most of you should be able to grab the foot, but if you need a strap, you can have the strap. And then lift, grab the the right foot, the ball of the foot with both hands, and then extend the heel and lift the chest. You can bring that leg even closer, even more perpendicular, but you want to make sure you're reaching through the diaphragm and the chest, almost like you're doing a back bend. And then that that quadricep is engaged, the heel is lengthening away from the hip. Good. And then exhale, bend the right knee, bring it on top of the left into cow face pose. So I'm going to, I press on my inner ankles, I lift my hips and kind of place it so that my sits bones are down and if you need a blanket, if your hips are super, um, kind of that right hip sort of hanging there, you can get a bolster or a blanket and just scoot it under there. And then let's take the right hand behind the waist, left arm by the head, and shimmy up the back of the right hand to meet or grab the, the fingers in this bind. Of course, you can use a strap um, in your left hand for the right to catch on the back. And then we're going to exhale and come into a forward fold. Following the breath, asymmetry in the legs, even breath in the core. Right elbow is down and back. Left elbow is is, ex is internally rotating, so that inner biceps moving up, the outer shoulders moving down. And this actually feels super nice. See if you can come forward even further. Take another couple breaths. I'm feeling this in my right outer hip, in my front of my right shoulder, my core. left tricep, last breath, and exhale, release the bind, release the strap, and come out slowly, placing six bones, and then bend that right knee, bringing the um, right heel by the left hip, and we'll come to crane pose on the left, grabbing the ball of the foot with both hands, Pressing the heel away. So it's kind of like Paschimottanasana, but facing towards the ceiling. Coming up it with our chest, really almost like reaching from our kidney space and the low back through that diaphragm up through the heart center. And then can you pull that foot closer towards your face? and engage the quad. So if you're feeling tension in the neck, try and bring it into the side ribs. Using the arms and core. And then exhale, bend that left knee and cross it to lay on top of the right knee. And I'm gonna, I use the heel of my hand to press my knees closer together. And then 
Sometimes I'll take my feet and kind of pull them by my hips for cow face pose. Again, if your left hip is like dangling, like not touching the ground at all, and you would feel more comfortable with a bolster underneath, that works too. Let's take this to the other side. So the left hand's going to bend behind the waist. The right arm is going to bend by the ear. And then shimmy that left hand up the back to grab a couple fingertips or the, all of the fingertips or a strap if you have a strap in your right hand. Once you find that grab, moving with the breath, sink the hips, lift the chest, and fold forward. Elbows moving away from each other, right shoulder is coming forward and up, the outer shoulder that is. And again, there's that asymmetry in the hips, you know, feeling that left stretch, but the core is breathing evenly through both sides of the body. And there's this nice shoulder opening. So work with the breath as you exhale, lean a little bit further towards the left inner thigh. So you're almost completely draped over it. slowly come up, release the binds, release the shoulders, and let's make our way to our backs. Give the legs a squeeze, bring the knees in, rock side to side, and then drop the heels in front of the glutes, roll the shoulders underneath the back, Lift the hips, tuck the tail towards the knees, and make a clasp with the hands, coming into bridge pose. Take a little back bend here. Press into the heels. Lift the hip points. Let the pubis come towards the rib cage. Can you lift the hips higher, inner thighs rolling down. Lengthening the low back and the spine. And exhale. Slowly roll out. And we should wipe your knees side to side. Let's take another one like that. This time if you want to bring your hands underneath your heels, that's another option. Rolling the shoulders under, take a clasp or step on your hands. Press through the heels, press through the quads, inner thighs down, and just let the weight come all the way up to the tops of the shoulders, releasing the neck, getting some nice length through the torso. Can you even out the weight, even out the stretch? And exhale, release. Windshield wiper the knees. And then we'll take our figure four again. So bring that left ankle on top of the right knee and pull the right knee in. You can grab the hamstring or the top of the shin. And then use your left elbow to press the left knee away. So this is a, a version of pigeon pose. And then from here, let's open up the right arm to the side and drop the legs over to the right. So the sole of the foot is going to come to touch the ground. If it doesn't touch the ground, adjust your posture a bit so the knee isn't as far or isn't as close to you. 
and then look over that left hand. So this should feel really nice for the hips, the waist, super grounding. Inhaling, bring the legs back up, give the shin a squeeze again, and exhale, switch sides. Both feet down, cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh, pull the shin in, use that right elbow to press the right knee away from the face. And remember, we always have our yogi toes. So pressing the ball of the foot away, including the big toe mound. And then release that left arm to the ground and then right arm to and drop the feet and the legs over to the left. Letting the sole of the foot touch the ground and then look over that right hand. Letting the body just melt into the ground. Letting the breath cascade around any tight areas, just releasing the hips, back, neck, shoulders, Inhaling, bring both knees up, feet flat, and make your way to your Shavasana. If you need to take any poses to adjust yourself to get into that Shavasana, by all means do so. And in our last few minutes we'll do a little guided shavasana here. Rolling shoulders underneath the chest, letting the feet come slack. Letting the breath be soft. Closing the eyes, feeling the weight of the back of the head on the mat. Withdrawing the senses. Becoming hidden like a still calm lake dark, deep lake where everything is hidden deep inside the body. Feeling that stillness with only a tiny movement of the breath in the center of the body. heart, feeling light emanating from the heart, healing every last tiny quark inside of us.
staying in this posture for another few minutes. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. Namaste.